Um, my name's Maddie, and I like to party. You probably didn't believe a word I just said, and that's because my nonverbal communication was speaking a whole lot louder than my verbal communication. It's been found that 93% of all communication is nonverbal, leaving a whopping 7% to be the actual words that you say. Actions speak louder than words, and I'm a firm believer in this. And I believe that if everyone realized that 93% of all communication is nonverbal, they would be a lot more careful and aware of their actions and how that affects what they do. And like I said, I'm a firm believer that actions do speak louder than words, and I wanted to learn a little bit more about it. So I researched it, and I found that there are seven types of nonverbal communication. Body movement, um, voice, touch, appearance, physical space, physical environment, and time. And today I want to focus on the three that interest me the most, which are body movement, voice, and touch. First, body movement. Amy Cuddy, in a TED Talk, gave a presentation, and it was titled, Your Body Language Shapes Who You Are. In this presentation, she talked about how your body language shapes who you are, like I said. Um, your confidence and how people approach you. If I'm standing here like this, and you know, it sends off a message that I'm insecure, that I'm shy, I'm, I'm uncomfortable, or if I'm like this, you know, I'm powerful, I'm the boss, people, you're approachable. Um, she says she takes faking it till you make it one step farther by saying, fake it until you become it, not just till you make it. Um, she describes this a little bit by giving a study, and in the study she had participants come, and for two minutes she told them to hold a power pose, which was, you know, standing firm, tall, strong, or, you know, being laid back, or just something that makes you feel powerful. And after the two minutes, their participants reported that they had increased confidence. So fake it till you make it. Fake the confidence until you make it, until you become it. In the textbook, Looking Out, Looking In, um, it reports that 90%, uh, there's a 90% accuracy in identifying moods from posture. Just simply by the way you're standing, people can read um, how you're feeling by simply how you're standing, and there's 90% accuracy. If that doesn't show the role that um, body movement plays in nonverbal communication, I don't know what does. The second is voice. In the article, Nonverbal Communication, Improving Your Nonverbal Skills and Reading Body Language, we learn that it's not what you say, but how you say it that's important. Um, voice is also known as paralanguage, and um, like I said, the way a word is spoken is a lot more important than the actual word that's spoken. It can give it a totally different meaning. Um, I can emphasize a different word in a sentence. I'll take the sentence, I didn't say you stole my money, for example. And by emphasizing a different word each time I say the sentence, it gives the sentence a whole new meaning. I'll show you. I didn't say you stole my money. I didn't say it, someone else did. I didn't say you stole my money. I never said that. I didn't say you stole my money. I implied it. I didn't say you stole my money. Someone else stole my money. I didn't say you stole my money. You did something else to it. I didn't say you stole my money. You stole someone else's money. Or I didn't say you stole my money. You stole something else from me. Do you see how each time I say this, it gives it a totally different meaning? That goes to show the importance of voice in communication. Lastly, we have touch, and whenever I think of touch, I'm reminded of the movie Pitch. And in the movie, there is a scene where Alex, the love doctor, is teaching Albert about hand placement and where he should put his hand on his crush's back. Um, I'll keep it PG, but he, the quote goes, you know, if you put it up here, that means that you just want to be friends. But putting it down here means you just want to grab his butt. But by putting it in the small, that's, you know, what he, the message that he wanted to portray. Um, it's a funny example, but it's so true. Hand placement plays a huge role in communication. Um, touch doesn't just emphasize emotions. It contains its own vocabulary. You know, different touch means something totally different. Everyone kind of understands the touch language. There was a study at DePaul University, and they had um, people come and briefly touch a blindfolded stranger and then report the communication that they felt or the mood that they sensed. And there was a 78% accuracy in the moods simply by touching them. Um, there was more, sometimes it was more accurate than the voice or even face. Uh, so, to sum this one up, 
before you touch it about thinking, before you think about touching someone else's back, remember the message that it might convey. To wrap it all up, um, we learn a lot more from nonverbal communication than we do from verbal communication. Um, body movement, um, the way that you are acting, the way you're holding yourself, um, it lets people know if you're being what your mood is, how you're if you're being approachable, if you're confident. And remember to, if you're not feeling confident, fake it until you become it. Um, next was voice, and we learned that how you say things is a lot more important. There's you know you learn so much more from how you say things. You can say something sarcastically, and it's something totally different than the words that you're saying. And lastly, by touch. Uh, it plays a powerful role in relationships and how you respond to others and how others respond to you. As we learned from Peter Drucker, the most important thing in communication is hearing what isn't said.